So, um, here goes. Uh, rear-facing myths in regards to child restraints in vehicles. So what I thought I'd do is try and do this visually and make it a little lesson in a presentation in a, uh, an easy manner to understand. So it's always the age-old myth rear-facing uh, in a nose-to-tail crash. So our uh, little collision here in a nose-to-tail everyone's going to say that you're going to end up with some injuries, um, as in this post, to do with uh, broken legs and the forces involved in crashes. Now, the biggest problem we have here is someone's probably done some Googling and they have a basic understanding, but they don't actually understand the physics behind why a lot of the issues come about with these myths and why they're, they're pretty incorrect. So what I thought I'd do is explain to you nice and simply three of the laws of motion, but basically concentrating on the first two. So these are Newton's laws. I don't want to complicate or, uh, or um, make it too complex, but breaking down nice and simply so you can understand where I come from with my opinions, and whilst a lot of these myths that you hear are actually totally wrong. So I apologise for my handwriting in advance. My fifth form English teacher said I wrote like a spastic on fire, so I suppose that's pretty accurate. So we need to talk about Newton's laws. So Sir Isaac Newton is one of the bases on his laws of motion are the basis of modern physics. And modern physics leads into crash investigation. So he came up with three laws. We're going to talk about the first two laws. So his first law, in very simple terms, is I'll keep moving unless and external force stops me. So what does this mean in, uh, in a collision in relation to um, the injuries we sustain? Well, the common myth is that in a crash you are thrown forward. So if you have a head-on collision, you, you're thrown forward into the dashboard. Well, that's actually wrong. Because if you look at Newton's first law there, I'll keep moving unless an external force stops me. So what actually happens in an impact, and we'll talk about head-ons, is the vehicle actually stops, but you keep moving. Hence why, why we use the name restraint. So a seatbelt is a restraint for an adult, and a child restraint, obviously, for children. So they actually stop you moving forward. So in a collision, the car stops, but you keep moving forward. Hence why when you see in crash test videos with child restraints, you see the arms coming forward and the head coming forward. And that forward head movement is what we're trying to actually stop, because that results in the spinal injuries. So a seat belt is actually designed to restrain you or stop you hitting objects inside the vehicle. So if you're not wearing one of those, that's when you hit the dashboard, the windscreen, and all sorts of other issues. So that's our first law. So what does that mean in our two uh, scenarios down below here? We've got a head-on and we've got a nose-to-tail. Well, basically what it means is that in a head-on collision, as I said before, your vehicle stops for intents and purposes you're going to keep on moving. And this is the same feeling you get when you go around a corner. You're not being forced into the door. So if we're going around a left-hand corner and you're driving and you feel like you're being forced into the door of the car and you feel like you're being forced across, well, the fact is you're actually turning and the car's turning and you're wanting to keep going, which means in a straight line. So you're, in effect, actually keeping on going in a straight line and the car's turning left. In a nose to tail, what does this mean? Well, yes, technically... In a nose to tail, when you're hit from behind, so if we have a, uh, a force, and we'll use a force as an arrows, so if we're hit from behind, we're going to have a force coming this way in this collision. So what does that mean? Well, if I get hit from behind, there's a force coming up from behind me, and I'm going to get pushed forward. So technically, yes, the car's going to keep moving forward, and I am going to uh, want to not move. I'm not going to move because I'm not restrained. So in a vehicle for a forward-facing passenger, that's when you feel the, what feels like a big punch from behind. That's actually the car moving forward and your body not wanting to move. And the external force happens to be that force coming in behind from you. So in a rear-facing collision, you are going to be in your seat backwards, aren't you? So a rear-facing child... Clean up the diagram here. So in a rear-facing collision... Yes, the child is sitting in their seat, and they are rear-facing. So if we have the rear-facing seat in the car, 
and we have a force coming from this direction, yes, there is going to be this tendency or this feeling for the child and the head to move backwards. And that's clear. What is the difference is when we start getting into Newton's second law. So that one's a little bit more complicated. But just to reinforce it, Newton's first law, you're going to keep on moving unless, until an external force stops you or tries to move you. So if we just get rid of these diagrams. So we're then going to look at Newton's second law. So Newton's second law, not to confuse you, is basically force. So force is what causes our injuries, what breaks bones, what causes whiplash and all those sorts of things like that. So Newton's second law in nice and simple terms is the first one is mass. So that's how, how heavy we are in simplistic terms. So that doesn't change in a collision for us. We weigh the same, the car weighs the same, etc., etc. What does change though is this little A here. So that's acceleration. So that's how fast we speed up or in essence how fast we slow down. So... The faster we slow down, so the bigger deceleration. So if we think about this when we're driving a car, if we brake slowly, we're still going to come down from 50 kilometres an hour and slow down to zero. But we're not going to have as much force, not much feeling of us of the seatbelt restraining us. If we hit the brakes really hard, we're going to slow down a whole lot faster and you're going to feel that a whole lot more on you. So we can actually change that formula. To equal this. So our mass change is the same, but we can actually have a change in velocity. So a change in velocity is us either speeding up or slowing down. And on the bottom of that is time. Now this is our important factor, and this is the holy grail for engineers, and that includes child restraint engineers, is we want to make the bit on top as small as possible. Our change in velocity as small as possible. So we want that, we put in an arrow, we want that smaller, so less than. So we want to get that as small as we can. Because it's change in velocity divided by time, we want to make the time on the bottom as big as we can. So the bigger we make that time, the bigger the number is on the bottom, the smaller that acceleration is. So what does this mean for us in child restraints? Well, this time when we're talking about a crash, and most crashes are over and done with in 0.3 of a second, is we want this change in velocity to be as small as possible. So, if we get a car, we'll get our collision again. So, if we first talk about a head-on collision. So the statistics, while I'm just handing out my little photo here, is the most common collision in New Zealand is a nose to tail, so a rear-end collision followed by a T-bone or a side impact. And then our last, least common, is actually a head-on. The problem we have, though, is a head-on collision has the most crash forces involved. And this is the dangerous one for us. So what we need to remember is we'll leave our little formula over here. Our force, how much we're going to feel, is related to maths multiplied by a change in velocity. So I'm going to use a little triangle there, which is a bit of a scientific term, over time. So we want a small one of those and a big time that we take it over. And that's what I was talking about before. If we're driving along at 50 kilometres an hour and we brake slowly, we're still going to slow down, we're still going to have a change in velocity, but it's over a lot bigger time, so we don't feel it as much. So in a car, in a 50, say we use a 50 kilometre collision, if my car is travelling along here at 50 kilometres an hour, and I have an identical car traveling in the other direction at 50 kilometers an hour. When we collide with each other, and we're identical cars, identical situations, we're going to end up at zero kilometers an hour. So if we come in at 50 this way, and we come in at 50 this way, our change in velocity is going to be, so our change... is 50 kilometers an hour. Now that's a large change in velocity for us, and for a human, and especially a child, that's a large change in velocity. So something like a 50 kilometer an hour collision like that, we come down to zero kilometers an hour and that happens, we're gonna suffer some severe injuries in the crash. 
Hence why we rear face. So when we're rear facing, we use the holy grail sort of number of fifty kilo, of uh, 45 degrees, that actually spreads a load over the body so we actually, or the child, experiences less forces on them. So the load's spread over their back, but also with them sitting at a 45 degree angle, they experience less of that change of velocity because it's, it's a horizontal line, like those two lines are shown there with the arrows. So that change in velocity is 50 kilometres an hour. So that's quite big for us, and that's going to hurt in a collision. Now, if we take a nose-to-tail collision, in situation here, so I'll just hunt out my little diagram. So if we have a nose-to-tail, we're going to have some different scenarios and some different physics involved. So remember, it's our change in velocity we're looking at. So if we have a nose-to-tail collision, and we say it's the worst scenario that you can have. So the front car is zero kilometres an hour. So that's our worst case scenario. You're stuck at traffic and you're at zero kilometres an hour. And this car here comes in at 50 kilometres an hour and hits you. Now this is a large impact. If a car hits you at 50 kilometres an hour, even a nose to tail, you're going to have some sort of injuries. But what we're looking at here is... We now have two vehicles, so the change in velocity here to do with the physics, and we're going to have this big, which is a little shock there, we're going to have this crumple zone here, so a lot of the energy that's involved, or momentum there, is actually taken up in crushing the front of the vehicle, and also crushing the rear of the vehicle, and this is why I'm very hesitant about children rear-facing in the back of some vehicles, because you've got a lot more crumple zone, and you're actually going to have physically the car impacting with them. So our change in velocity in this collision, and we'll, we'll just pluck some numbers. Remember the little, the delta there, the little triangle is a change in velocity. Our change in velocity there, if you'll hit two identical cars again, this vehicle here, this front vehicle, is probably only going to be pushed forward at about... It's only going to be pushed forward at about 20 kilometres an hour. So whilst in the head-on we had a change in velocity of 50 kilometres an hour. You can see now, our change in velocity in this front car, we've gone from 0 to 20. So our change in velocity is only 20 kilometres an hour. And this vehicle here has gone from 50 down to 30 kilometres an hour. And I'm just plucking some numbers here, but they're pretty right. They're pretty so that's change in velocity is about 20 kilometres an hour as well. So they're both going to experience about the same change in velocity. And... The main reason this is only 20 kilometres an hour is because we've got a car there. Even if you've had your foot on the brake, when you get hit, you're going to roll. So a lot of that's just going to be transformed in it. So we've got a lot less forces involved. So if we have our little formula over here on the right that we've been dealing with, we're going to have a lot smaller number up the top here. So that's only 20. And the time over it, is going to be a whole lot bigger. So we're going to have a larger number here. So this one here is going to be a lot bigger. So in essence, bigger number on the bottom of the division, smaller number on top means a lot less forces involved. So we come back to the original the original um, problem, which is you're going to end up with broken legs or you're going to end up with being forced back into the seat. So Newton's first law again, remember you're not being thrown back into the seat, it's the fact that the car is stopping or moving. And we're looking at a head-on, we're going to have a delta V or a change in velocity of 50 kilometres an hour if we have a head-on collision at 50 with each other. For a nose to tail, we're going to have a lot smaller delta V of only 20 kilometres an hour. So there's a lot less forces. So for this top collision here, it's going to be over and done with a lot faster and your force is going to be much bigger. For this collision here, we're going to have a lot less force. So a lot less force is going to be a lot less injuries. So broken legs simply don't occur in nose-to-tail crashes with a rear-facing child. You've also got the fact that our rear-facing child is typically at a 45 degree angle. And so if we have a look at a collision at a 45 degree angle, if we've got all the energy or all the force of the collision coming through the car this way, 
if we're sitting upright, so vertical at 90 degrees, we're going to feel all that energy or that principal direction of force. We're going to feel it all. But because we're at our 45 degree angle here, in essence, what we're actually going to feel is a lot smaller force. So if our child's sitting at 45 degrees here, so if they're sitting at 45 degrees here, they're not going to affect, not going to feel the full force of this. They're actually going to feel uh, a lot less force. And it can be upwards of 70% less because we're sitting on an angle, so you're feeling it. So the child's back is getting supported in the back of the seat here. So even though we've got a nose-to-tail crash, and yes, technically, the child's head's going to move forward, we've got a lot less forces involved, and they're also at an angle, so that is going to be a whole lot less. So in essence, rear-facing crash, a rear-facing child with a nose-to-tail collision is still better or still safe. In simplistic terms, look, if you get hit by a big truck, then all bets are off whether you're rear-facing or forward-facing. But typically in your nose-to-tail crashes, we've got a lot smaller change in velocity. This number's a whole lot smaller. So there's a whole lot less force involved. Because if you remember our little formula, force is mass times acceleration. And that acceleration here, we can change to equal a change in velocity over time. And that's the same thing. So our force is always going to be a whole lot less if we have a smaller change in velocity and we're going to have a larger time. And in a nose-to-tail crash, the time on the bottom is a whole lot larger and our change in velocity is a whole lot smaller. So in essence, the force our child or children feels is a whole lot less. So hopefully that sort of explains the question uh, nicely.